Welcome to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. In this video, I want to explain how to use uh, the proper setup for recording points, measured data, how to do it, how to name them, and a couple tricks to go along with that. On the main operator screen right here, if the screen is up and down, they'll be on the bottom here. If it was oriented the other way, it would be on the right side. But right here, it looks like a, an icon on the bottom right here with three dotted lines coming to a circle. If you originally get your machine set up and touch and go in there, there's a chance that this always prompt is turned off. And that gets people in trouble a lot of times. If that's turned off and you go out, let me show you. If your operator or anybody just hits that button, it just creates a point right there on the screen and you had no chance to actually say what you wanted it to, to do. So that's why I suggest that you go in to that icon by touching and holding and turning on always prompt. That'll make it to where every time you accidentally or hit that button, either intentionally or accidentally, it's gonna take you into that screen. If you have a scenario like this where there's points that just started recording on the screen and you don't want them, where that icon is, you can touch and hold on it and actually delete that. You can go to select point and you can see that number one right there. You can either navigate to it, edit or delete it. And we'll come back to navigating to it here just in a second. So in this scenario, let's say that I have a bunch of water valves. Like you can see right here, I have a cluster of water valves that have been covered with uh, cones and I need to actually mark them. So I have them on the screen recorded for myself and also in case the office needs them. If you go back into that icon right there at the very bottom for record point, now you can just touch it. You can name it right here. So let's say these are water valves. We'll put WV for water valve. For the code, you can actually go in here and give it different information. Point name is only gonna allow you to put 15 characters in there. Code will allow you to add quite a bit of text if you need to. You can do it however you want, but in here I may add something uh, to the effect of new valves, and if you know when they're installed, you could put installed and a date. You could put a 324, 23, just giving you the options there. Now for measured data, if you want to just have all points that are recorded on the job site, manholes, water valves, whatever, you can leave that just on the, that one and it's going to save them and keep them on your screen altogether. If you want to keep things separate, there's this black box with the arrow to the right side of measured data. You could come in here and actually create a new one to keep them separate. So if this is water valves, we could actually name it water valves and create a folder that's going to save those. So let's say I had manholes, if you want to keep these separate. You could hit add one more time, and you could come in here and say, uh, manholes. Whatever you need to do, if you want to keep it separate, make sure you do that and hit done. But right here is where you pick where they are, or what they are. So this is water valves. So I'm going to change the water valves, name it, code, and what it's going to do is it's going to try to save that point wherever my bucket is. So I'm showing you this for a reason because now if I hit save, it's actually going to record that point up in the air. It records it whatever side your red carrot is on. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that one one more time. Select point, water valve, and I'm going to delete it. So now what we can do is you got to make sure that you set it to the right tip. So if I'm going to come down here and record this, water valve, but I want to use the right tip. I'm going to slide to the side, set it down to the water tip elevation, and I'm going to change my red carrot to the right side. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do the same thing again. Make sure it says water valve. And I'm going to leave all that information the same and then hit OK and save. This time it actually records it right where it is at that point. So now what I can do is go to the next point, set down on it, and we'll record that. 
now I've got a third one. But this time I'm going to record it with the other tip. I'm going to slide over and I'm going to change it to the left tip. And I'm going to hit record point. Now the reason why it's water valve 2 is because Earthworks doesn't like duplicates. So you can't have a hundred water valves that are all named the exact same. It's going to want to be water valve, water valve 2, water valve 3, water valve 4. It's going to go ahead and add that in there. No problem. You can go ahead and save that. Now, with that one that I did with WB, that I accidentally did, I can touch and hold on it. I can go to select point. I can go to WB. And I can go in here and I can edit that. If I did need to change that, like I do, I'm going to go water valve. And we'll put a 3 in there just to kind of help the system out. So it's not a duplicate. Now that has been edited to different names. So if I have a scenario where I've got one more point over here I want to record. But what I need to make sure is that I'm on the right side of my cutting edge one more time because I'm doing it from the right side. This one is going to be a, ma a different one though. It's going to be a manhole. So we're going to change it to manhole. We'll go ahead and change this to the manholes folder because I want to keep those separate. And then I'm going to just go ahead and delete that. And we could just put something in there like new one just so we know it's a new versus an existing. If it was existing, you could go ahead and put that in the code too. Go ahead and do the same thing. Hit save. Now we've got that saved on the main screen. But because I changed to a different folder, you'll see that those water valves aren't there. They would be right there. That's where you and your company and you as an operator need to understand the difference between doing different folders and not. Because now those water valves are actually off the screen. They're not erased. They're just on a different setup or a different uh, measured data folder. So you can come back and go back to job setup if you need to and come down to measured uh, data and hit water valves if you want to see those. <clears throat> Now you can see that the water valves are there and the manhole's not. Some companies and customers may want to leave that all just on one work order so that it's not, a, not an issue of out of sight, out of mind. One more thing I wanted to show you is what you actually see on the screen right here. So there's this uh, stack of papers that I call it at the top right. It's actually the layers manager. If you touch and hold on that, the overlays. If you go in here, that's where you can do what I showed you earlier with turning crosshairs on, machine boundary, et cetera, et cetera. But there's an option right here called uh, points. So right now you can see that I've got icon and name. So if I drop that down, I can turn on icon, name, and code. If I hit apply, now it's actually going to show everything that I typed in there, which, yes, is quite a bit on your screen. But at least it's all there. The information is there. If all you want to see is just the icon, you can go in there and change that to icon only. And it's not going to give you any of that other information with it. I personally, when I've done this and ran equipment, prefer to at least see the icon and name just so that I can know exactly what I'm running, running up against. The other thing I was going to show you is the navigate back to it. So let's say one of those points was down in the ground a little bit further. Maybe what I'll do is edit one of those to show you uh, this water valve three. I'm going to select that point and I'm going to go ahead and edit that. And I'm going to change the elevation on that to about four feet lower than what it was. We'll put that at a 90. We'll hit save. So that point has now quite a bit lower in the ground. Let's say it was recorded at a water valve that had been set lower and it needs to be raised and you want to know exactly what the height of it is. You can touch and hold on that point, go to select point, water valve three, and I can navigate to that point. It changes my screen quite a bit. Now you can see I've got different icons and uh, information at the bottom, navigate direction, navigate distance, and a depth. So if I spin back around to that point, Yes, you could have normally just hovered over the top of it, but in this scenario, I want to actually go to it, and I want to see how far down it is. I can go until I get to a point with my right tip that I can see my navigate is basically there, my direction, 
I can get to the point where I'm right over the top of it, but it tells me that it's four feet down. So now you can reference. If you know it's four feet down, that's what was recorded. If you got to start digging down to find it, you don't have to have that, oh my gosh, scary pothole every three inches. You could safely take off a couple feet, maybe three feet before you actually have a guy start um, potholing to get close to it because it was recorded at a specific elevation. Your excavator, your dozer, your grader, anything that's earthworks acts a lot like a GPS rover at this point. Now, once you've done what you need to do here, you can hit the stop button to stop that and navigate to that. And one more time, if you go back in there to select those points, you can select it. You can either navigate to it, edit, or go ahead and delete it. Or you can hit this go to points manager and you can see all the different points that we have in there. This one does show because I have it set to all points. You can go in here and actually change it to water valves manholes it was recorded with a 315 with the the um serial number here this is very helpful because these points that are recorded with this machine can be sent out to other earthworks machines or it can be transferred to a data collector they're just northern eastings and elevations and if you did send it to another machine it's going to be branded water valves with what machine recorded it but now you can see with all points, I can see what ones are on the screen. I can hit the three button and do the exact same thing. So this one right here, even though it was turned off on the main screen, I can touch it to actually see which one is which. It'll actually highlight it here when I touch it. This one I can go to manhole and say, hey, navigate me to that point. Now as I come back out to the main screen, you can see that I've got that blue icon referencing where it's at even though it's not showing it because i have it turned off i can go and turn that layer on but it will still reference me to where that point is or was when it was recorded even though it doesn't show it so there's a lot of different ways to use record point i think these are very handy one more thing i was going to show you is let's say that something was potholed in uh, the beginning of your job site out in front let's say right here that someone potholed to a gas line or water valve they just wanted to find it but they're going to fill the hole in you could set your bucket tip or whatever machine you're using over the top of it hit record point name it do all the information here but edit the elevation even though your bucket is up here you can actually measure with a tape measure or however you want to gain that information and say okay it's six feet down we found it put it over it, record the northern easting elevation, and then edit the elevation so that at any point later on, you could use the machine to reference that point. This is a Site Tech Intermountain training video on recording points.